in the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, we have great sin in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most greatest fault. Therefore, I ask for us, my ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. We, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting night. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father, Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world and receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve a table. Brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with the spirit and wisdom whom we shall appoint to this task whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was acceptable to the whole community, so they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Hermanus, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. The sponsorial psalm Lord, let your mercy be on us as we praise our trust in you. Exalt you trust in the Lord. Praise from the upright is fitting. Give thanks to the Lord on the, lo on the harp. With a ten string, clear chant this, his praises. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we praise our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, 
and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not put shall, shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that will make people stumble, and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word, as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on, you do not you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. On today's feast, Mother's Day, Jesus has a word for our moms and for all of us,
struggling with the coronavirus pandemic. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. Jesus tells us to trust him during this time of pandemic. God allowed this suffering to come upon us for his own reason and purposes. We may not understand, but we can trust Jesus. When America suffered its greatest trial, the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln expressed it this way. As was said 3,000 years ago, so still it must be said, the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. We may not be suffering so greatly as people did during the Civil War or during the pandemic of 1918-1919. Still our suffering are real and for many quite terrible. Elderly dying alone, aid with family members holding a sign outside the window, and loved ones unable to give a proper funeral, people having their lives wrecked, maybe a business they work hard to build now in ruins, or the uncertainty and fear caused by massive unemployment. People are asking, why does God allow this? Why does God permit so much suffering? We do not know why. We do know that we all, to some degree, have sinned and turned away from God. Lincoln speculated that God's judgment came because of the great sin of slavery. We certainly have done things which could break the judgment of God. We do not know how long our present suffering will last. Whatever the future brings, we can make an act of trust in God's righteousness. If we unite our suffering to the cross, they have value, redemptive value. I know some people will object, why do we need faith in God? We are the ones who must combat this bias. We are intelligent, we have technology, we have knowledge. It depends on us, not God. I would like to paraphrase the message from my last Sunday's homily. Life is too difficult to attempt to make it through safely alone. We need direction, we need protection, we need Jesus Christ in our life. Some people are thinking they are strong enough and smart enough to be independent of God and the church. There is no such creature as a self-made man or woman. We are dependent and upon the Lord, Jesus Christ is the strength that gives meaning, purpose, and direction to our lives. There are many times that we are tempted to go along with a philosophy of life that treasures actions that are in themselves self-destructive. In today's Gospel, Jesus teaches us that he is the way. Thomas Aquinas wrote, without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. Without the life, there is no living. Our Lord comforts us, exhorting us to reject fear, for we cannot be troubled in this world if we live by faith in him. God has a purpose for every child he sends. They may help us to grow in faith. Jesus Christ is the way. When we focus on him, he draws us to himself. 
He draws us away from the distractions, away from the noise. Jesus Christ loves us so much that he draws us to his life if we let him into our lives. This is the message of today's Gospel. Jesus is telling his disciples and us, while we may not know the future, we know him who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is telling that we may not know what the future holds, but we do know who holds the future in his hands. God the Father holds the future. The way to him is through Jesus Christ. I would like to sum up today's message with a quote from a woman named Cory Ten Boom. She was a Dutch woman who helped to save Jews during World War II. The Nazis finally cut her and sent her to the Ravensbrück concentration camp. Corey said this, If you look at the world, you will be distressed. If you look within, you will be depressed. But if you look at Christ, you will be at rest. Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. United in faith and fortified by our Savior's love for us, let us present our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For the Pope and all who serve the people of God, may the Lord help them to persevere in defending the Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O world leaders, may the God of justice help them in their work of serving their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer for the sake of the gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we who worship at God's altar may be transformed for service in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may God welcome them to his heavenly table. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, your Son, Jesus, came to give us a share in your life Hear the prayers we offer today, today through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, 
you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, put up the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we will be accepted by you, Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cast before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, of Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, of Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have called us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, 
the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And the same was commanded formed by the right teaching of the to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
remain, you are the branch of says the Lord. Whoever remain, remains in me, I in him, there is fruit in plenty. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Gracious to be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you, good women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Say, my holy archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and humbly pray that thou, Prince of the heavenly host. May the power of God trust into thou, Satan, and all the other evil, evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. We Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. I wish you have a happy Mother's Day and good and healthy Sunday.